Hello there, crackbook crackers and Twitter tweeties and everybody else. Um, the Halt the Adoption Drive live video is now up. Unfortunately, I had signal go down in the middle of it. Um, and also, what you've got to remember, guys, is I'm not a videographer. I could put together some amazing bloody videos with all statistics, um, but that is not my skill set at this time. So if you can put videos together, bring your skills, bring your tables. But I've just literally watched a video of a mum who is down at courts. And guys, I know, I know that some parents... Oh, how do I say this? How do I say this? When you're stood on camera and you've got a fag in your hand like this with it blowing all over the smoke and you don't have teeth and you do represent... Somebody's going to go, really? Seriously? But this is the point. At the end of the day, who should judge? Who should say whether somebody should be raising a child? what government is looking at. And actually, it's probably quite good that the mum is doing it because people will sort of go, and I, f I feel really sorry for the mum right now, but it doesn't look good. It isn't great. It's like when we were down at Downing Street and we'd have mothers down there with their beer cans freaking joking and laughing. It doesn't represent the way that we should be representing for our families. Do you know what I mean? Um, hey, Frederick. Um, I'm doing okay, but we've got to smash it this week, guys. We really do need to smash it because... Um, Nobody should be judging anybody. Um, I'm not here to judge anybody, and nobody should be here to judge me. Um, but when you do see mums on a video like that, with the fag blowing out, um, it does make people think, well, I'm glad her daughter or, or son's not with her right now. Um, but she's welcome to smoke, I smoke, blah, 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 blah. Um, but it doesn't look good, does it? And you've got to be articulate with, with these things. You've got to come in hard on them. Nobody wants to listen to... Um, what Take Fathers for Justice, for example, when I was running with Fathers for Justice. Fathers for Justice used to scale the buildings and drop the banner, but they had nobody to speak. And they, they did try bringing me in, but, you know, this is my path. This is, this is where I am. Um, you know, it is very important to, to, to be very, very clear and say how you sort of came into the system or how the system came into you, what experience it was, what you went through, why it was wrong, what the problems were, how it could have been different, what the outcome was and how the outcome could have been different if they had done things differently. Um, because people don't want to listen to, you're a bunch of fucking cunts, you're kidnapping our kids. It isn't going to get us anywhere. All it's going to get is police knocking you down and knocking and taking you straight out. What you've got to you've got to be saying to them is look we know that there's a deliberate problem in this system but what you've got to remember is the people that work for the system come genuinely to help the majority of them come straight out of university with an intention to help the majority do hello david mortimer i haven't seen you for a long time how you doing nice to see you're still around um but yeah, when you stand outside the courts or when you stand um, outside adoption agencies and something like that, you must represent your children. So if you're standing outside effing and cuffing and going, you're this and you're that, they look at you as if to say, I ain't surprised she hasn't got her kids. I ain't surprised he hasn't got his kids. If you're stood outside and you've got a beer can in and a fag in this one and probably just been down the back alley sticking some needles in, they're going to look at you and go, I ain't surprised that they've come in and take these kids. These are parents that just don't understand that this isn't an environment for a child. But at the end of the day, that doesn't mean that that child needs to be removed. And only the only way a child should ever be removed is if there really is genuine abuse. But what this system is trying to do is obviously not allow for that to happen who wants to wait for somebody to stick their penis up a baby's ass who wants to wait for somebody to drown a baby in the bath who wants to wait for the person that neglects because they're too out of their head and leave their child somebody nobody nobody wants these things to happen but at the end of the day there are incompetent parents out there but if we had a system where rather than social workers sitting in a building writing paperwork, say this park that I've got down here right now, 
you could have frontline social workers coming down here at say in the morning working with families helping families i wrote on a post last night by what line do we draw what is right or wrong do we work it by what i think is painful like take take um spirit cooking for a prime example for anybody who knows what spirit cooking is um this is something that is really difficult for people to get their heads around but if you actually look at it and you actually I, i've had to go right into it because you can look at these pictures and go what the fuck is going on but and this obviously comes down to hillary clinton this is what uh Assange was that he 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 announced on his emails that they were involved in spirit cooking stuff she's an artist She's an artist, by the way. So actually, the pictures that you see is, um, hang on, I'll read that in a minute. But the pictures that you'll see that even mortified me was pig's blood. It's not human's blood. And what she was writing was antagonizing people. Um, I am still going a little bit further into this because um, I'm even thinking of going and because i want to see for myself exactly whether or not they are hypnotizing people or whether or not there is other stuff going on there are people in this country so take mothers and fathers for example just let, let me just take david morton's question because he always comes up with common sense he says uh why mum is better than big mother okay this is one of his blogs called cool. if, you, if you don't know who david mortimer is please do check out his blogs and things like that on family law reform i wish right now david that we had that email system right now i could really do with every journalist's email again i wish i had saved everything i have a feeling that my email basis has because um but i don't know obviously all the mps have changed over now so what will happen when i go over into my email in a minute i will pull up every previous emails which would have gone through the system that david had and it was absolutely bloody brilliant it basically meant you wrote one email and it would send it to every mp so all 400 and whatever mps it was and to all of the papers so one email used to get shot off to all of them and for those that know we used to completely chock a block parliament's emails and what you got to remember is brexit's going on at the moment and that's all they're interested in but we got really pushed through on this because family is the key to great britain family is the key to everything it's like i have um uh oh a moroccan family that live at the bottom here and they must have had eight or nine people here the other day literally helping them change over the kids beds taking away the old beds and putting in the new people because they just come together as community we the British people, we don't do this, we're not like this. We've been so divided, so alienated. We've lived under Henry VIII, say, you know, divorce and alienate, and you know, we've had this stuff going on for so long. Um, as I've said, I do talk about parent alienation, denied contact, but for this week and this week alone, it's all about adoption. Um, adoption is the best option, according to them. Um, but adoption is not the best option. Adoption is far from the best option. Um, it can keep a complete void. All children will grow up with rejection issues, abandonment issues, not knowing who they really are, what their identity is, where they come from. And also what this does is the doctors then actually use parent alienation in their own way. And that can be by just saying, um, your mum didn't want you. And just by saying that alone, you will cause trauma for that child for the rest of their lives i've all as, as you know for those who have followed uh, i've had dean's daughter posting all over my wall this week um because i've been quite aggy over the fact that i have had enough of being persecuted by what other mums have done and dean is very traumatized over whether or not he's ever going to lose contact with these boys and that's really sad because i know what's happened to him previously and no no parent and to all you mums out there, stop it, stop it. You don't just go and have sex with a man, take his sperm. These men are not sperm donors, darlings. Yeah, it's not your baby. It's not your baby. If you've got that amount of issues that you need a baby to love because you don't love yourself, go get help. Babies are not, are not toys. 
They're real lives. They're real children. They take a lot of responsibility. These babies are not nice little cute things that, you know, sit in the corner and go goo goo gaga. It, it, it takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of loving. It takes a lot of time. They cry. They need pooey nappies. You know, I've got two under three in my house and I must have changed goodness knows how many nappies and it's not the normal life and it's, you know, and you do, I haven't had a bath for freaking days. I haven't washed my hair for days. I haven't had time. Um, you know, we, you do become frumpy mummies. We do have vomit over our backs and spill down the sides and, you know, we do have to go through crazy heavy pre periods and, you know, and, and emotional torment and we do leak breast milk out. It's not, it's not this, hey, let's have a baby and put nice earrings in it and, and, and nice little curly things on and, and walk down the street and pat our baby on the head. That's not what children are here for. They're not pets. They're not dogs. Um, and they're certainly not for mothers to think that you can have sex with a man, conceive a baby, and one, not even tell him that he has a child. Two, actually, I have seen mothers tell fathers that they are not the father and it certainly isn't for any person to be manipulating or saying this father did this and this father did that because that is actually what is causing forced adoptions in the first place because once a father is away then single mothers are vulnerable to the system and there are mothers out there that think it's great and amazing to fuck the father off and then realize being a single mum ain't that great and actually it's quite hard work and it's not as easy you know, we don't live in a world that teaches us about relationships. Fuck me, yesterday, all I could see was LGBT, whatever it is, fucking takeover yesterday. You know, they were talking about bloody angels' tears and pain and, you know, satanic and devil and all of this sort of stuff. And, you know, all spatting themselves out there for sex on the market. You know, love is love. Love is meant to be about, you know, couples that come together two halves of each other, you know, and they're meant to be permanent because we're not meant to be in this world by ourselves. It's not easy to be in the world by itself. If Dean was here, I'd probably talk to Dean about more stuff than I talk on, on Crankbrook. I don't know where that relationship is going right now. I don't know how it is. Your parent alienation and, and forced adoption causes a lot of trauma. It's very difficult for two people to go through with no proper support. And this is one of the problems in this country right now is there is no, we have relate, we have all these different things. And I can't say there is no now, because actually here in Portsmouth, there is. So um, a, a program called Healthy Relationships, called Up To You, is actually working with families where there's been an oops upside the head and they've crossed the line. Um, Jeremy Kyle won't even touch parents where, you know, and it does happen, it does happen. And obviously we live in a world now where when a mother says to a father that they're pregnant, the first thing fathers are saying, don't do this fathers, it's the most insulting thing you can do, is the first thing they do is, is it mine? You've just broken the heart of the person that's just told you they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, there, unfortunately, there is a lot of women out there that fuck about, don't have any integrity, they shag a different man every Saturday, do you know what I mean? Been there, done it, got the t-shirt, been that slapper, lasted about a week um you know it's not good it's not clever um and children have a right to know who their fathers are children need both sides of their family what you've got to remember is children come from their dna and that dna comes from their father and that dna comes from their mother fathers provide certain types of tools and education that the mother can't and the mother creates stuff that the father can't and children need both of those parents. They also need both grandparents. They also need their uncles and aunts and all of these things because they're meant to grow up in a community. And unfortunately, here in the UK, family has just been completely broken down. The basic value of family just doesn't exist anymore. I mean, even look at Boris Johnson. His dad doesn't believe in anything that he does and is condemning him in the papers. And his brother's already belittled him. That's not a family sticking together. That is not an example of core family. And of course, Boris Johnson's been putting his dick in other people you know so he certainly doesn't value you know marriage and family also now a few other things about boris johnson being the fact that he hangs around with pete parsons here and i know what all of these guys used to get up to so um be quite interesting if he got drug tests when the last time he was taking coke mr boris johnson and i do have videos and evidence of you doing this so um 
don't lie about it. Um, so at the end of the day, we all have a right to a life. We all have a right to a private life. Here in Great Britain, we're going to be rewriting the whole Bill of Human Rights. And we, the people, to do with family reform, need to be coming together now massively, networking between us and coming up with a proper blueprint that we can be presenting to the courts and to the parliament to say, this is what we're going to be living under. This is the structure. And parents do have issues. You know, parents do have fallouts and we should be living in a society where people can go and sit and chat to somebody and talk about their problems. The problem with social services is it's a reporting system. In fact, actually, I had a foster care kid contact me yesterday and um, the way that he explained it is somebody dogged me mum in. He said, oh, somebody dogged me mum in and I got taken off of her. But he then had seven to eight foster carers and um, eight or nine social workers. This is unacceptable. This system needs to accept that it doesn't have the resources or the funding or the tools to be able to cope with it. What it should be doing is putting frontline family support workers in that help. Yeah, turn up at your door. Hey, how are you doing? What's going on? Oh, fucking hell, Kelly, look at that pile of ironing. Come on, girl, let's get it done. Do you know what I'm ah, That's not actually my pile of ironing. That's all of our stuff, all pulled out, all of the stuff for the charity as well. But for somebody with EDS, it freaking hurts me with my shoulders doing this. So I keep struggling and I keep going back through it and putting it down. There's nothing wrong with needing a bit of help. There's nothing wrong with it. People can't run businesses without there being lots of different people because everybody has a different school, still a, a different skill and a different tool. And this is where us campaigners now have all got to come together. Don't alienate who can do what better, you know, whether if I'm a speaker, that doesn't make it the Kelly show. It just means that that's what I'm good at. I told you, I've been told all my life, she's going to talk for Britain. And I have a feeling that's going to happen. Some people are great at paperwork. Some people aren't. Some people are really good at practical help. You know, making somebody a sandwich, making sure that they're eating. Some people can help with things like, you know, making sure that families have all of the things that they need. Look, at the end of the day, we should be able to afford to have our kids. Do you know what I mean? Don't bring children into the world unless... And actually, an MP's just been told off for saying this, but I do actually agree with him, um, that at the end of the day, if, if you can't afford to have children, then go get the pill and wait until you are in a, a solid relationship. But people fall pregnant on the pill. I also fell pregnant on the pill. In fact, my mum said in the papers that I didn't take contraception. I was on the pill. You know, I had my son when I was on the pill. Um, and also, you know, sometimes people do go out, go to a club, find out they get pregnant. But there should be more to then find that father. It's very easy to do so. You could go back to the club, watch the video. Somebody's going to know somebody. Um, you know, or just don't put yourself in them situations in the first place. We, as the British people, have lost integrity. Integrity is not intact. We have lost self-respect in this country. People are quite happy to whip their trousers off, get fucked, and obviously with that comes a baby, and with that comes responsibility. This is why I'm not always anti-abortion either, because, you know, yes, a child has a right to a life, but if you're not going to bring them into this world, and if you're not going to nurture them, and if you're not going to love them, then what other option is there? And for those who are on the adoption side, and I'm going to be over back over on, on FEA, Come, uh, not an FEA and hold the adoption drive. Um, it's just if I'm going to talk about other stuff and, 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 and then I can't be over there doing it because I need to be clear, concise and, and, and professional over on there because it's for the adopters. This is a bit wishy-washy. I can talk about anything and everything here. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, why would somebody want to adopt? One, they do it because they want to give a child a future and a chance. At the end of the day, why can't they stay with long-term foster carers for that? That's what they are. But the reason that they get them to adopt them is because they have to pay for the long-term foster carer. And it costs the government and children break down and, and it moves around. And also it comes from a point where people can't have children. So this is why we need more surrogacy. If somebody is going to have a baby, then it needs, and they don't want that baby, and they do want to provide adoption for it, then that should be something very separate. Adoption isn't for somebody to go to the adoption puppy pound and go and look for their blonde hair, blue eyed child. And no disrespect to the gay community out there, but, you know, no disrespect, but I don't know.
It's complete fucking disrespect, yeah? Um, that's mental health issues. And to raise a child into a gay community is more abusive than raising a child in an alcoholic family. Because at the end of the day, it's their own family anyway. And if a, if a family does have alcohol issues, unless dad's coming in drunk and going poof, poof, but there are ways of dealing with this. And I know this sounds really, really horrible, but there are ways of supporting families. I am dealing with somebody who has alcohol issues at the moment. He's been drier and cleaner in 50 fucking years ever. And he's done rehab, he's done everything. And just in the fact that I accept him for who he is as he as he as as and when he comes. Sometimes I see him very drunk. Sometimes actually he turns up very sober. My children understand what that is and what's going on. No, I would never ever put my children in a situation, and I certainly wouldn't leave my children. You know, but there are there are grounds where children do need to be safeguarded. But there is a difference in safeguarding children from the truth and actually creating lies. And this is what is happening within social care and within the courts. Um, what people are not realizing as well is if you swear, there is a law that they then write. I think it says, I can't remember what it says. So if you've sworn, it then says volatile and something, something behavior or something. But basically it comes from a law. So you need to understand how law is written. So. I don't want to get waffly and on and push onto this video, but if you imagine now we sit down and we write a new paper. So say we say, why to halt the adoption drive? So halt the adoption drive. These are the reasons why we feel that the current proceedings need to be suspended, do, 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 point one. Yeah. So then you've got a law. So it will say point, it will be one, two of section three. Yeah. So that's how these sentences work. This is how these cut and pastes work. And that is pretty much what you're dealing with in, in the court process. You're dealing with a systematic degree that has been put together into a program. So point one, point two, and then it will be paragraph five of point three of point five of point ten. And these are all subheadings. And then they'll have a, the cut and paste. So this is no different than the DSM, which is basically how psychological diagnosis is done. So based on a probability, somebody who has been through child sexual abuse will be systemic of this. A child who's been removed is more likely to have um, an attachment disorder or... No, it's not mine. Um, you know, and, but again, these are all headings and subheadings. So basically, then you sit in front of you, you've got a big file in front of you, and then it will say, do, 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 do. But it's not reading as, as you. Now, if I had my own way with this system, the moment you come in, you would sit down, you would go through the wheel of balance, you'd look on a scale of one to 10, which areas you needed to work on, which areas you were doing really well in. And that's what we would do. We would work on, 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 on building that out, you know, and, and putting those right infrastructures in place. But that system doesn't work like this, does it? Because this system is coming from a child protection point of view. It's coming from the fact that you're guilty before even, you know, there is no trial, by the way. You, you know, they say it's a trial, but a trial takes a jury and we're just sitting in front of a judge. Um, and that judge makes a decision based on what CAFCAF and um, social services have said. Um, but unfortunately, parents are not being represented correctly either. So we do need some really good solicitors, really good people to come forward to start supporting these families. Um, and I'm hoping on another side of all of this, just remember today the Queen's speech come out. I'm going to go and catch up and see what Queenie Queenie, I've got the ball said, and um, see where she's going with all of this, putting our country structures together. And obviously Parliament seated today and we're all given their what's going to be going on and we've got xr still out there guys please remember it's not about actually look there's a little bit of a thing going on let me tell you a story very quickly when i first become a coach and my coach said to me if you could do absolutely anything and this is the question that they ask they say if you could actually do anything funding was not an issue the resources was not an issue, skills and, and knowledge was not an issue, what would you do? I said <laughs> that I would put in the papers that we were going to war. And they went, what? I said, I would put in the papers an urgency that brought everybody together, 
and got everybody on the same page and got everybody to just stop. And if we could just get everybody on Great Britain to just stop and all be on the same page and then just to go, ah, now let's reset and let's get on with it. So that's pretty much what XR is doing at the moment. And yes, we do need to change. Yes, we do have too many cars on the road. Yes, we do have a massive amount of problem with children that are asthmatic and, and poorly. Yes, we do have obesity going on. We're not as bad as, 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 as America. Um, but yes, we do have all of these little problems going on. Polarization is real. Climate change is always, our seasons certainly show you that there is an issue, but Mother Earth can look after itself. Mother Earth is so fucking clever that if the frackers carry on doing what they're doing, she will, she will, she will show them their karma. Um, Mother Earth is that amazing that if all of a sudden we got every single car on this road and all polluting it and it was going cough 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 all of a sudden you would see the biggest fucking storm ever and she would wipe your fucking cars off that way because mother earth is one of the most powerful things grass grows trees grow somebody plants a seed but that oak tree becomes an oak tree by itself um you know but it's the people it's the people but greed has become such a problem now that compassion for others is out of the window you know, the system now is people who are working for the system at minimum wage that can't afford to look after their own families, let alone support somebody else's. Um, and also there is a projection going on as well because you get a lot of abused children who've never told anybody growing up wanting to become social workers and they have a rescue complex. So nobody rescued them, so they want to rescue all of these children. Um, I can't think what country it is now, but they're going to be scanning all children for child abuse. You can recognize it. As somebody who has been raped and sexually abused, I know what it's like to walk around thinking that everybody can see it. People know that you are contaminated, that you're that dirty, that you only have to walk down the road and people know that that's that abused child. That's a really horrible situation to be in. Children are abused and they do need to report. But like in my situation, when me and my mum were at loggerheads with each other when I was 15, taking me into foster care wasn't the answer. Breaking down my relationship with my mother even worse wasn't the answer. My mum did make it very difficult for them to work with her, and she did. But what people have got to understand is there's this barrier between their job and our lives, and that privacy. If I turned around and said to David Mortimer, prime example just right now, say I live next door to him, and... Sorry to be really personal here, but you know, if I turn around to say I'm just using his name and David lived next door to me and he had a, a, a relationship with a kid and all of a sudden there was a massive big huge row going on and we're sitting here in our house going, oh fucking out, oh that's a, oh what do you do? Now the problem is, is the system's got us playing against each other to report the system. In fact, we've got a letter out in our law now that if there's any antisocial behavior, so if there's anyone smoking weed down here or if you see anybody drinking, we have to report it to 101. Why can't you just talk to the person? I got another fucking letter about my music this week, but nobody's ever come and knocked on my door and said, look, Kelly, it's a little bit loud. I know you're cleaning, got your kids. You know, they could actually turn around and say, tell you what, I'm gonna take the kids out on the park while you get it down. You know, I don't have to listen to the music and, you know, and, and it'd be fun, but no. It has to be self-reported. Now, I do believe that one of the massive things that we need, by the way, just to go back to David Mortimer and his dodgy relationship and his child going on, is in the, in, sorry, it's just the fact that he's in front of me. Um, you know, at what point do I then knock on David's door and say, are you guys all right, mate? Like, you know, do one of you maybe wanna come around here and just chill out for a bit? Cause this is getting a bit heated between you guys. What right have I got to do that as a nosy neighbour? Now, if all of a sudden, and I'll tell you what, David's probably one of the sweetest things I couldn't imagine him raising, and I'm sure David wouldn't mind me picking on him out of every family that's on here at the moment, but if all of a sudden, I then walked in and David turned around and said, you, you little fucking shit, get in there, bang, right? And I stood there and went, oh my goodness, what do you do? What do you do?
never do this. I'll try to reconnect me now, it's kicking me out. Um, but at the end of the day, we have the service that is there to protect. But what is going on in this country right now is actually, David didn't do that. I was just a gossipy, nosy name. He goes, did you hear him? He just, he actually, what he did was slam the door on me. He went, fuck off you. No, he hasn't actually, this hasn't happened. I'm being hypothetical. But within these environments right here, I turn up and I knock on this man's door and I say, excuse me, but you're arguing. He slams the door on me and I go away and go, did you see that fucking cunt? He just slammed that door on his kid. Yeah. When false information is being presented like that, then there has to be a system that says this can't happen because the consequences of that is police turn up at these doors and walk in and nastily take those children out. Now, the question that we have to ask is, at what point do children need to be safeguarded? Even if you've got a parent that goes, oh, you little blazing fucking cunt, come here, you little stupid kids. Yeah, that is child abuse. But what we should be doing is re-educating, helping people understand the consequences of that behaviour to that child. And this is where, like, I go really mental with people here. They'll come up to my son, they'll go, all right, trouble. Don't you dare call my son trouble. And I'll hold you to it. People don't get me in here right now because they'll walk past. They think they're being endearing. They think they're being caring. All right, trouble. No. Because then all of a sudden you'll watch my son kick or get a bit funny because words have power to call my son trouble creates troubled behavior my son's an angel beautiful all right sunshine is not a problem all right mate is not a problem but don't ever call my son stupid and don't ever call my son trouble because you're likely to be hooked upside the head and removed from my son because by saying all right trouble you're projecting bad energy onto my son but i understand this i understand the power of the words but if we were being taught this as just as easy as we're being taught to potty train and we understood the power of words then we would probably have a great society anyway um i have no idea if my my thing is in i've got nobody messaging to say yes i'm still here or no i'm not um but li oh fuck, there's loads of you here um but it is just say it's spinning around saying try to reconnect through to reconnect blah 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 um but anyway, I need to go back over to some of the Step Up Britain stuff because I've got to pull it up. And it's also 20 past four. And I literally want to uh, get people while they're a little bit exhausted on the phone. And um, I want to quickly go and make a couple of phone calls. And hopefully I've got all of the numbers and Amber's got them ready for me. Um, I just want to pick up on something that David's just said. Uh, false accusations of domestic violence and child abuse are used in family courts on a daily basis right across the country by resident parents, mothers in the vast majority of cases. Um, actually, I have statistics that says it's the other way around, 60-40, um, to dictate the outcome of contact with residents and impurity. Um, the family courts view separated couples as two legal components, the resident parent and the non-resident parent who does not live with the child. Although these two legal conceptions might sound similar, they are treated completely different in the family courts. And this is one of the biggest problems because it stops people standing together, even if you are a couple as well, because even if you are a couple, you still have to have two separate legals. Um, they do not have uh any other significant or presumption rights over the children most people believe that they have a right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty in the court of law if they've been accused of domestic violence or child abuse given they are our criminal offenses however this principle only applies in criminal child which have to be proved a person is guilty beyond reasonable doubt it does not apply in the family courts and this is one of the biggest problems um which are civil proceedings, which are in the best interest, test is applied to all decisions that are made on the balance of probability. Family court judges do not believe it would be in the best interest of the child to question what the resident parent has said to see if it is true or not. You can read what David has been writing uh, in at the bottom. And please do check. He's very thorough, does his research. He's been here for many years. He's been here even longer than I have. Um, and at the end of the day, if you have two parents working together, you're not going to get in this situation in the first place. Once fire and fire starts between parents, you find yourself in family courts, then you end up with Kafka, then you can end up with social, or it's the other way around. And to fathers that do walk away from their families, 
please remember that mother doesn't really know what's going on. She's left with 100% of that responsibility. But also to the mothers to realise that when a father has to leave the family home, he's pretty much leaving with a backpack and probably sofa hopping um, and doesn't have stability because you're in the family home. So at the end of the day, if you've had a child with somebody, that child is to be loved. And if you don't want them, then please go and get them adopted. And if you're here and you don't want your child, please fuck off on my system. I'm not here to deal with people like that. I'm here for people who have been absolutely battered by social services, who don't know their ass from their fucking elbow, who are being persecuted left, right and centre by little remarks and stuff that you know you take personally and don't know how to deal with. Um, and I am going to come in as a legal advocate because I've had enough and I can help and I am helping. It's just at the moment I'm a bit of a rogue. Um, and one of the other challenges as well is I speak to some parents, but then they come back into this network and they listen to everybody else. And, and what I've said just becomes completely irrelevant. And then they wonder why, you know, they still haven't got their children back. So we do need to take direct action, guys. We do need to bring private prosecutions against them. We do need to be holding them accountable. And we do now. Protests don't work. We need direct action, guys. And even if that means attending somebody's case and saying, witness, we are a forced adoption exposed witness. We are here to witness what is going on. We're going to record it. We're going to interview them. We're going to be there if they're going to be removed. We're going to video it. We're going to push it. And we're now going to show, like, exposure don't take my child. Paul had the balls to video that. And it's fucking lucky he did because it's only because of that we're able to show what's going on behind closed doors. Um, I'm going to shoot off because I really, really struggle with this spinning in front of me. I'm just going to have a look and just have a check because I do need to engage with you a bit. I know I can be a bit of a cow and I overload sometimes, guys, but, you know, lots of respect. I love you guys lots. It's the fucking trolls. And also, if you know that I've got Dean's ex-partners watching me and posting, don't get involved. You know, don't give them more ammunition on me. How fucking stupid. And if you can see that I'm clearly talking to one of Dean's alienated daughters, you know, leave it, leave me to it, yeah? You know, if you're posting on, she's nuts, she's crazy, you're giving all of them family more ammunition. And if my mum's doing it, stay out of it, yeah? If you can clear, you know me well enough now to know I've got my private life, my business life, my campaign life all in one box right now. Um, so please, you know, if you can't respect it or if you can't stand up for me, then don't say anything at all. Um, so just a massive respect to, to Frederick. He's doing his videos and stuff like that. Frederick, um, I'm sure actually you have a chance of saving yours. So I need to double check. David Mortar, lovely to see you. Hannah Edwards, congratulations with your wedding and all of the hard work that you did, girl. And um, yeah, you know, it's your story, your thing, but well done, well done, well done. You've done fucking amazing. And I hope he likes his peppers, mushrooms and onions. Um, I think I'll just skip through, I find it quite difficult. Uh, Sharon is here and oh, Laura Ross. I, sometimes I don't know who you guys are. I know you know who I am, but I don't always know who you are. Um, Maria has said some children need adopted for their own safety. Uh, some people just need a family network. You know, even I now would love to be adopted. You know, I'd love to have a mother and father around me supporting me and someone to talk to and someone to be grandparents to my children. So I do get it. I do get why adoption does need to be the better option than long-term foster care. But there's bigger problems in long-term foster care as well. You know, like the fact that there's like three contacts a year and all this way. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It can't work this way. They can't keep bomb breaking in the way that they have. Uh, Lisa is here. Um, please, please do read what David, if you want to educate and inform yourself, David pretty much has most of the stuff. Belinda is here, and please be respectful to Belinda. Belinda is one of my best friends from when I was a kid, by the way. So those of you who do know Belinda Shayla throughout the groups, I don't want anyone fear-mongering this mum. This is, this is one of my actual personal friends, somebody who, you know, from the age of 19 to 23, we were best friends, absolute best, the best buddies, best friends, and um, was actually what set this all off for me when her daughter's daughter was taken and I couldn't get my head around it. So this is actually where it all came from prior to my children being taken. And those that do know Belinda, then Belinda was adoption herself. And 
you know, lots of lots of support and lots of love. And I shouldn't say because she's my friend, but at the end of the day, she is my friend and I want her to get the correct help. She doesn't need fear mongering. She doesn't need any more drama in her life. Um, she's now, you know, lost her home as well. So, um, you know, Belinda needs lots of love and lots of care right now. She doesn't need to be pulled into. She already knows what it's like to be abused by her doctors. So she knows firsthand. Um, love you lots, Belinda. I'm always here. You're more than welcome to come talk to me whenever you want. Um, and um, yeah, so, you know, please do remember that's one of my personal friends. And um, Caroline up in, uh, Caroline, who managed to get a birthday contact. So I can't wait to see how um, your birthday contact went. And yeah, it doesn't always show me who's here and who's not here. Um, and unless you comment, unless you post, unless you like, I can't see. And also it is the likes and it is the comments that help us go up the Google ranks, guys. So please do subscribe to get any lives and updates. Please do go over to Hold the Adoption Drive because I'm going to be over there this week. Um, I'm going to be post, and then that will go posted out to FEA, F to, to me, blah, 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 blah. I know it's a little bit spider's webs at the moment, but there's a reason for it. Because if you want to catch the fly, you've got to create a web. And we're about to catch the fly, so to say. So I'm going to quickly, before five o'clock hits, quickly go and ring Parliament and a few other things and hopefully sit down and write this. In fact, David might be able to help me with it. I need a proper structured letter so because I don't have Word documents or anything like that. So I've got to try and do an email. Um, and I don't have all the files that I previously need. So I need a proper structured letter with all the statistics and a couple of the case studies. So if anybody wants to help put this together, and then we can fire it off um, via halt and um, bring this system to a halt and hopefully ready in time for a new system. And please don't forget, guys, if you're joining us on the 31st, it is the end of tax and move to tithe. I do know somebody's running with it, so hopefully this will be put out on XR and they, those guys are all going to go for it as well. Because the only way we can bring this system down is to make sure that all the money is moved to people who are not corrupted and not greedy and moved to people who are kind and who are considerate. Um, and obviously, you know, deal with this in the right way put the money where the money needs to be and put the support where the support needs to be and um, sometimes it isn't even about money sometimes people just need to listen in here and that's it so anyway guys i'm going to shoot off i'm busting for the toilet my kids will probably be up in a minute i need to get over to the park i need to try and get my phone fixed i got all my shit to deal with i really need somebody at the house giving me a hand now it's getting ridiculous i could be doing so much more if these two hands weren't trying to do 10 million things right now um obviously i got my letter from the adopters obviously i'm not happy that my daughter has been taken off by herself and come back with her hair cut and dressed like a boy i know what that means and anybody who's ever been raped or sexually abused will know what that means um it's been hard and it has um and also uh dean's been stranded over in spain because he lost his bank card um can't do anything until he gets back over here and um he's paid tomorrow so he's either going to end up turning up or not turning up i have no idea um the joys of dealing with somebody who's been through parent alienation um so anyway guys i shall speak to you all soon lots of love and please 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 make sure you set, share every event let me let us know of every event that's going on in your area and then we'll get a bulk message that literally gets put in bang it's gone um and then all of us then come in so if there's any newspaper articles as well we all need to be coming in on the articles writing if there's any tv programs out there then we need to be coming in but please remember that there's two sides of this there's there's children that do need forever families and then there's the failure that's going on and you cannot discredit that there are children that need to be saved and if you go in there going you're a bunch of fucking cunts mate it isn't going to help us represent ourselves, is it? And it's not going to make us look good. And if you're coming under my banner, mate, and you're making this banner dis discredited in some way, then you deal with me. And I'm not very nice once uh, I'm fucked off and pissed off. Um, I won't name you. I won't shame you. I'm not here to blame. I'm not here to judge. But I'm here to make sure this movement works. Um, and we do need to halt the adoption drive. So anyway, I'm going to try and get hold of the new president and I'm going to be on it all week and I'm hopefully you guys are too. Um, and if you've got any information that needs to be shared over to me, any new statistics, anything that I need to help do this better for us, 
then absolutely fantastic. So you have me for one whole week to literally hold the adoption drive. And I'll hope to God that we can get these stories out and these messages out to say and keep using that word that this current system is flawed. We must halt the current system. We must halt the adoption drive. We must suspend these current cases um, and bring things around. And to mums at the moment that are going through stuff, don't feed off their drama. And I know there's parents out there that you don't particularly want other people to get their kids back. Why would you when you've lost yours? Not everybody. Some people get greatness out of seeing my kids, but some people don't like that I have my kids. So don't project your shit onto each other. Do you know what I mean? We might all be in the same boat, but it doesn't mean you need to be rocking people out of it. We've all got our own trauma. We've all got our own problems going on. No disrespect. We're not friends. Belinda's my friend. But, you know, we're not friends. We are just all different people. We're not in each other's lives. But there are some of us now that need to come together properly now as work colleagues and as campaigners that need to be getting our heads together, getting our own think tank together and deciding how we're going to come forward because we've got to be ready, guys. This is one shot. If we don't get this in now, we got another 10 years and it will be. It's another 10 years. We could actually do this now and turn this around and just have people that, you know, independent complaints officers can go into the courts um but if if we, we we got a space of two months mate and if we don't do this now then you know we, we're going to be cemented into a whole new system by next year um so anyway guys i will catch you later just reading about that maternal deprivation so yeah um lots of reading lots of studying lots of understanding but it's about getting you up. It's about getting you ready. It's about getting your confidence back. And I'm going to bring some coaches on to talk to you guys as well. And um, once we get some things properly, I'm going to bring some people on to talk to you and help you through things. Because at the end of the day, that's what I am. I'm a coach. I'll take people from where they are to where they want to be and help them close the gap and, uh, you know, be the people that they were meant to be. And that's how you need to be. Because when your children come and find you, do you want them to find a depressed, stoned, drunk, miserable labeled freaking homeless whatever or do you want them to find somebody who's got you know a, a good business doing what they love in a nice home ready to say yep knock on the door yep your bedroom's there you know so remember prepare for the day that your children come home because they will come knocking one day i promise you that most of them do and on to special guardians as well so get yourselves ready to bring your children home and if you don't want your children home you just want to use this as an example then move aside for those that do want to i have every intention of bringing our own faith back and i can't wait until i do my first christmas they might want a private life who knows they might just say mum can you just take it all down and i might just say bye guys kids for it um but that day is going to come it have been one year, five years, ten years. That day is going to come. Those children will come. My children. My children. Yes. Mine. My mum called them their parents the other day. No. I'm their mum. I'm their parenting. They're certainly not parenting my children because they don't even know their identities. They're only just starting to catch up with what I could have told you way back then. Same as Shiloh. Got professional skater, professional skateboarder. Aaron was no different. Aaron was is pretty much Aaron. Aaron and Shiloh would would, would would get on like a house on fire. So, anyway, guys, love you and leave you. I've really got to go make some phone calls, and hopefully, I'm going to have my numbers ready for me. If not, I'm going to have to quickly find some before um, go and make some calls quickly. I just want to let some people know that we're here. I wanted to do it this morning, but I had to go to food bank because we're completely empty. So, and thanks to my friend who sent me some nappies this week, um, and uh, I'll catch you all guys later. Bye. Oh, remember all the adopters are out there fundraising to make sure that they can kidnap your kids, but nobody's out helping me get this done. So just remember I do this on zero budget. Catch you later, guys.